The Arctic Circle experiences some of the most extreme conditions that can be found on Earth, and it turns out that temperatures that dive well below freezing and lengthy periods of no sunlight are not ideal conditions for life, as the polar regions have some of the lowest species diversity of plants and animals in the world. Despite this, many species do still call this part of the world home, but one group of animals that are extremely uncommon are reptiles. However, this wasn't always the case. Fossil evidence shows that millions of years ago, reptiles did frequent the area, and not just any reptiles. Hidden away in the ancient rocks of the Arctic are the remains of the largest lizard ever known to have lived, the Mosasaurs. Mosasaurs were the last of the giant marine reptiles to evolve, and are actually very closely related to lizards and technically are actually just giant aquatic lizards. Early mosasaur fossils that were more closely related to their land living relatives are quite rare, and so their exact relation to lizards isn't known, but they are either most closely related to monitor lizards or snakes. During the Cretaceous, the other giant marine reptiles like plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs were severely declining or becoming completely extinct, and by the late Cretaceous, mosasaurs became the most dominant large predators in the ocean. At the same time, they started evolving much larger body sizes, and by around 80 million years ago, the family had multiple 10 meter plus species terrorizing the seas, like Tylosaurus and Mosasaurus, that may have exceeded 13 meters in length, making them nearly twice the length of a killer whale. The fossils of Mosasaur found in the Arctic have not been identified, and they have not been named a new species either. However, the remains are likely from different Mosasaur species that weren't closely related, so Mosasaur swimming in the Arctic seas wasn't a one-off, and there were most likely different species of Mosasaur living in or visiting these waterways. During the Cretaceous, which was the last period of the dinosaur era, the continents had mostly separated into their current shapes, but were in different positions on the globe. However, in the Arctic, the continents haven't actually moved very much since, and in fact it's very likely places like North America and Northern Asia were even further north during the Cretaceous. Due to this, polar seasons would have seen longer periods of permanent darkness in the winter and permanent daylight in the summer. It is predicted that the region of Russia where some of the fossils were found would have experienced two full months of complete darkness during a Cretaceous winter. The researchers have argued this would make it very unlikely that the mosasaurs were living in the Arctic permanently, and instead, like many marine mammals, were migratory and would have only visited the Arctic in the summer. Although the periods of permanent daylight and darkness would have been longer, it would have been significantly warmer than it is today. Global temperatures during the Cretaceous were much higher, and so even with being further north, this would have created a much milder climate in the Arctic. The weather would have been much wetter and more temperate, probably similar to the Pacific Northwest or the UK and Ireland, having mild summers and cold wet winters that usually stay above freezing. Despite being much warmer than the Arctic, these parts of the world still have relatively few reptile species, especially marine reptiles, and they are too cold for cold water predators like grey whites, that are either rare or completely non-existent in these locations, so it is significant that Mosasaur seem to have thrived in a similar climate. There are marine reptiles like leatherback turtles that can swim in colder waters like Canada and Scotland, but they can do this because they are warm-blooded or endothermic, and have specifically adapted to handle the cold. They have a thick insulating blubber layer under their skin, and efficiently transport heat from their core to the rest of their body to keep their temperature above their surroundings. So it is likely that mosasaurs were at least not completely cold-blooded in order to survive in these environments. One way scientists can reveal the water temperature of ancient seas and waterways is through measuring oxygen-16 and oxygen-18 isotopes. The process of rain and evaporation favours the lighter oxygen-16, which means that hotter water will remove a larger quantity of oxygen-16 through evaporation than colder water. These oxygen isotopes are incorporated into the tooth enamel of animals that live or drink from water, and these oxygen isotope values can still be measured in the fossils of long-dead creatures. This can provide insights into an individual animal's environment and diet, but also whether they had some control over their own body temperature. Tooth enamel of warm and cold-blooded animals shows different values as these creatures are holding their internal temperature above their surroundings. One study compared the oxygen isotopes in the teeth of three different mosasaur species, and a collection of different marine animals and seabirds at the same time as a control. The mosasaurs were three different sized species to represent a small, medium and large mosasaur. It has been argued in the past that some large marine reptiles, and even dinosaurs, may have been able to weather cold climates just by being really big, because the body temperature of large animals does tend to be more stable and less changeable with their environment. 
so having different sizes would account for this. Among the other animals used in the study was a prehistoric turtle and fish that were examples of cold-blooded animals from the time period, and the warm-blooded animals were two late Cretaceous seabirds named Ichthyornis and Hesperornis. Hesperornis being a flightless bird that had adapted to become mostly aquatic, like penguins. Both of these birds still had teeth that could be studied, as although toothed birds are now extinct, they were still very common in the late Cretaceous. The study found that the fish had a relatively low body temperature that would have been similar to the sea temperature of its environment at the time, whereas the prehistoric seabirds had a much higher body temperature that was probably comparable to modern seabirds. The mosasaur species averaged somewhere in between, but closer to the seabirds, offering good evidence that mosasaurs had ways of holding their internal body temperature above their surroundings. The term warm-blooded and cold-blooded are actually now seen as quite outdated, because the ways in which creatures warm their bodies are actually quite different and complex. Furthermore, it is more of a spectrum, with some animals being more endothermic than others. Tuna, swordfish, and great white sharks all have a type of partial warm-bloodedness known as regional endothermy, where they can keep certain crucial parts of their body warm in colder waters. They also don't maintain their body at a very specific temperature like birds and mammals, so although they can keep their temperature above their surroundings, they aren't really considered truly warm-blooded. It isn't known how advanced mosasaur's endothermy was. However, some of the other ancient marine reptiles may have had extremely advanced systems of keeping their bodies warm. The most adapted to an aquatic lifestyle out of the prehistoric marine reptiles, the ichthyosaurs, have evidence of a higher body temperature as well. The oxygen levels in their teeth were studied, wielding similar results. However, ichthyosaurs even have evidence of a fatty layer of blubber similar to whales. The remains of an ichthyosaur were discovered in Germany that despite being 180 million years old from the early Jurassic period, still had some flesh and skin impressions, most likely due to being quickly buried by marine sediment. Among the fleshy remains were chemical traces of blubber that would have helped insulate their bodies in colder waters. This would mean their endothermy must have been pretty advanced, maybe similar to leatherback turtles. Leatherbacks also have a blubber layer and have a relatively stable body temperature of about 25 degrees Celsius that allows them to swim as far north as Norway or Alaska. They are also generally more active than other turtles and reptiles, so their behaviour may have been more similar to the ancient marine reptiles. Even plesiosaurs have fossils found in various parts of the Arctic and near Arctic, including some fossils that have been identified as unique Arctic species. Similar to the other marine reptiles, it is possible plesiosaurs were warm-blooded also. Plesiosaurs have very rapid bone growth in their early development, which was much faster than what is normal for reptiles, and more comparable to birds and mammals. This could be a sign of endothermy because fast bone growth requires a more active metabolism. So three different lineages of marine reptiles that all adapted to a marine existence separately from each other likely developed abilities to keep their body temperature above their surroundings. These creatures are often used as an example of convergent evolution due to all adapting their limbs into paddles and developing a tail fluke, among other aquatic features. And this shows that convergent evolution didn't just stop at their body shape. So marine reptiles were extraordinarily adaptable, which led them to have a pretty much global distribution, including giant lizards swimming in the Arctic. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.